Well, for more analysis, I want to bring in Dan McClory. He is Managing Director and Head of China at Bowstead Baus Securities. Good to have you with us, Dan. Thanks, Francis. Good to be here. Well, as we mentioned, prices consumers are paying for everyday items surged last month to their highest level since the early 1980s. I went to the store the other day. A dozen eggs were about $5. Um, it's really crazy. Do we expect these rising prices to hit across the board? And the big question is, how long are these prices going to stay with us? Well, I think we do. And, of course, the, the prices that are being driven the most, you talked about it, heading into a grocery store. But... You know, plain old gasoline, just filling up your car. People are filling up most in those two areas right now. And what other products would you say, what other items and everyday uh, commodities are, are feeling the pinch? Well, you know, there's been a cutback in the purchase of appliances. Um, for the first month in a long time, used car prices were down in March. Those are a couple of standby products that have been bought throughout the pandemic and, and, and up through today. So those are being seen as perhaps somewhat discretionary. And, uh, you know, let's just wait and see. And gas prices, uh, uh, Owen mentioned in his story, they've given us some major sticker shock. Maryland here in the Washington area actually paused the state gas tax for 30 days to give uh, consumers some relief. And other states are doing the same. Do you think these kinds of actions actually make a difference in the short and long term and, and if not, what will it take to get some real relief for cons consumers? Yeah, I, I think it's going to take um, opening up additional sources of supply, um, reducing reliance on imports, um, energy-saving vehicles, e-vehicles, and hybrids. Uh, I don't think these short-term stopgap measures are going to make much of a difference. You know, here in Southern California, we had gasoline well over $6 a gallon for quite some time. Uh, President Biden has talked about E15, which is the 15% ethanol blend, could drop prices by 10 cents a gallon. That's, you know, a rounding error, let's say. But it's really got to be addressed either in alternative forms of transportation or additional sources of supply of energy. And those types of solutions aren't going to be a, an overnight kind of solution, right? We're, we're talking about long term. They won't. But, you know, it's, it's interesting, Francis. You look at Google data. And uh, e-vehicles was the by far the most searched item uh, in the last week, the highest ever. So people are thinking to the, the medium term, at least, as to how they're going to make those changes that can result in reducing their household expenses. Um, but you're, you're absolutely right. There are not any immediate stopgap measures that could take place. We asked a guest earlier in our program about the R word, uh, the recession, and how concerned you might be about one. Do you think that's possible? It's certainly possible. I am not overly concerned about it. Uh, we're seeing a recovery in the area that I'm involved in most, which is uh, the stock market and initial public offerings. Uh, we're seeing a return by investors after some of the tumult of the recent global events. But uh, I, I personally do not think that there, or there is a recession on the horizon. Uh, I think as we look at other parts of the globe, there are other areas to, to explore. You know, CGTN does a great job of bringing a global perspective. Uh, last week I was in Europe. I was with friends in Milan. Uh, one, Adria, owns an opinion polling firm. Another, Lucia, is an advertising executive. And, you know, they're just not driving as much. Uh, they've decided to turn the heaters off. Um, They've seen prices of commodities go up. They're looking at alternative sources of supply. You talk globally, and I wanted to go to, into my next question with this. I mean, how does what we're dealing with here in the U.S. compare to some other countries like, uh, you know, ones in Europe and, and what they're dealing with financially? Yeah, they're being hit even more severely in the energy area. They are so reliant on sources of energy that have been disrupted uh, that they are they are taking it really hard. And so they're looking at places like in Italy, for example, North Africa. Uh, Draghi just announced initiatives in Algeria today. Uh, again, they're looking at driving less. They're looking at using alternative forms of transportation. Uh, but they, they are among the highest uh, gasoline and energy prices in the world. And so when we see gas spike above $6 a gallon, it's sort of, uh, you know, the normal there. Uh, but I, I would just I would just say, Francis, they are finding ways to get by by using less. Uh, and in a in a very 
you know, small silver lining to this whole situation, you know, the global supply chains that have been strained beyond belief uh, with just a little back off in uh, purchasing perhaps can even recover and we might see a little bit of a return to normalcy there. We like to hear about silver linings. It's, they're very rare nowadays. <laughs> uh, Dan, more data will be out this week. Uh, so what will you be watching for in this data that's coming out? Well, well we've got uh, jobless claims, which should continue to trend downward. It's an extremely tight employment market. So I, 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 that would be my expectation there. And we've got retail sales, which you know most likely will be flat. And especially in some of those areas that I mentioned, uh, appliances, automotive, we're probably not going to see much movement there. So I think I think flat there and, and uh, uh, jobless claims down. And I'm going to hold hold off on buying more eggs. <laughs> Thanks to Dan McClory, Managing Director of Head of China and Bowstead Securities. Thanks so much, Dan.